<laughs> yeah. okay, so, so, hey, am I coming through? <laughs> I'm ready? You're going. Okay, hey, everybody. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, this is going to be an interesting Vistool Live. It is Friday. It's 12 noon. We got a packed house in here. Over here on the board, we got Christine. Woo! Behind the camera for a second week, we have Garrett Sato from Lafayette, Indiana. He's one of our biggest fans, and we decided to bring, no, he works with us. <laughs> hey, you know why he's the cameraman? Because Chris and Emily are still on their honeymoon. I thought it was because he had a face for radio. <laughs> that was good. Over here on the board. Whoa. By the way. Who is this? By the way, they reached out. They were in the Dominican Republic, and they were watching it last week. <laughs> Everybody here on the board, this is Minnie. Woo! And helping Minnie spin the board, we have from Indiana, we have the one and only... Travis Jesse. Oh, Travis, Travis. Well, I, I call him Travis. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So, also, we have a special guest on the line answering your questions. His name is Rick Bush. So, reach out if you have any questions. Uh, Rick's able to handle them. Uh, <laughs> I won't say it, Rick. <laughs> okay. Oh, I couldn't wait. Hey, by the way, everybody, thank you. This is my favorite hour of the week. Uh, and uh, hopefully yours. So, what else do I got to say? This is episode 174. And I want you to pay attention. Because in, I think, a little under a month from now, we'll be live in here during the second annual Festool HQ build-off. Two in Lebanon. And we will be here. Um, uh, I think that day is the 10th at 12 noon. And we'll have a bunch of uh, really great designers and makers with us building a couple pieces of furniture. And the reason I'm telling you that is it is so important because we will be raffling off the tables, benches, or whatever they choose to make, okay, uh, for a great uh, place here in Indianapolis. So check out the details. And um, that's that. <laughs> okay. So... Every week from now on, I'll mention it. We'll tell you who it's for and what it's going to, and we'll have special guests in here with us. It's going to be wicked fun. I'm so excited. Um, we have some folks from Shaper going to be here. We have Rubio's going to be here, and we have... Um, well, <laughs> we'll have Lucy will be here, but we have people from, we have Jake and Russ from Shaper. They'll be here with us. So we're going to have a one wicked couple of days. So... With that being said, this is the, Christine, is this number three or four in the installment? Number two, no, number three, because I did Remodeler, I did Cabinet Maker. Number three, my lord. Okay. You did Drywall? Okay, I did Drywall. Did number two. No, 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 earlier I did Cabinet Maker. So, this is t number three of Tools of the Trade, and it's gonna be geared to, we call this what, the Paint Edition. Painter. Painter Edition. So, everybody will say, oh, we just have sanders for the painter. No, 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 no. We have quite a few other things. Yes, I want to gear in on the sanders, but I want to open up your brains to a few things as we go through this. So, when I look at painters, I also think of finishers in the shop because they're actually laying down lacquers or urethanes or epoxies or whatever. So, what I go through today will gear toward your trade and what and help you make some choices like on dust extractors or the right starting sanders or additional sanders and vacs or CTs to your arsenal. Whew. So where do I start? I think I'm going to start over here with the Planex. Okay. Now, painters sometimes have to prep the wall because they're not finished properly. Okay, and yes, it, the Planex is designed for drywall. But what's more important, I think, it is the proper surface preparation for the painter. Say you walk into a house. Okay, hang on. Let's go here. This is what I'm talking about. Follow me, cameraman. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm already tangled, so bear with me. Okay, this is the inspection light. And we're going to go out here to the hallway. Christine, how am I coming through now? Good? Okay. 
So the inspection light, okay, and I'm gonna shine it on here. Now, Garrett, I want you to get this wall right now. This can be a curse to a painter, but it can also prevent a ton of callbacks but you have to prep the wall properly if you're gonna put another coat of primer or what on it, or paint. So I'm gonna, look how that just pops. See that, look, see that piece of, um, uh, that might be a roller, but that also might be some drywall that they left on there and they didn't sand the wall properly before putting or rolling out the wall or spraying the wall. So it's an inspection light to inspect the work you've done. Come over here, Garrett. Okay, oh, you can also see the studs here in the hallway, okay? Because the drywall guys may not have done it properly. But this will help you, and I call this nibs, there's little uh, pieces here that you want a perfect surface. So that's one of the biggest things for the, paint, the painter is you don't want the paint to fail because the surface is improperly prepared. Wow, so to prep a proper surface, that's what you wanna do. So let's turn on the Planex. I'm gonna select the right paper. Let me shut the door. I don't wanna disturb anybody. And when you're using a Planex, of course, this is the Planex M, you always start off because it's a random orbit. Okay, and I'm gonna use it on drywall. to take it off. But this is what I wanted to make sure you understood as a painter. It's also to prepare the surface and denib it or take some roller max roping off. So if I come in here, I can come back to this wall and I can prepare this wall for the next coat of paint. Okay, and you actually clean it and give it what we call a scratch coat. So what I wanna do when I went all the way around this is I wanna make sure you understand the Planex is just not for drywall. It's to properly prepare a surface for additional coats of paint. It's so important. Now, with that inspection light, you can check it before you roll it or spray it to make sure and then check it after. Emphasis, inspection light, so you're not back at the shop when the homeowner or commercial owner calls you and says, hey, this job isn't the best, okay? It'll save you a ton of time for callbacks, and that's what I was getting at. Now, I'm gonna go one step further, because when I saw the inspection light early on, it's a STL 450, and 450 means the length of the light here. Okay, it's 450 millimeters. I'm gonna turn it on. It's a button right here, and what's important is I've always done this in my shop, when I was spraying lacquer, okay, uh, for cabinetry, I always set a light up here at the end. And with this tripod and this mount for the inspection light, it makes it wicked easy to create what is known as a raking light. So the reason Mikey and I did this in the shop was when we're spraying, I can get perfect overlaps. And you can see it just lay out perfect, and you can actually see your... As you have this light, you can see your finish lay down right, so you don't get any, uh, if you overspray on this edge or this edge or this edge, you don't get a fat lip. Okay, so it's really important to do that, to have a light when you're spraying. And this inspection light is absolutely perfect. So, why do we sand in the paint industry? Well, I've already got that one, to properly prepare a surface to denib or to get any uh, roller marks out or any spray lines. But also, <laughs> there's other ways, other things you do. One could be removal. Okay, you need to remove paint. And how do you do that? Well, you gotta choose the right tool and then the machine to move the tool. Whew, boy, this is tough, but it's gonna happen, I'll, I promise, okay? So let's go over here to choosing the right, uh, right tool first. Come on over here, cameraman. I've always considered the right tool being the paper and the grit. But I will always ask, what are you trying to accomplish before I recommend something? Like I have this piece right here, okay? And do I wanna remove it? or just sand in between coats to give it what is known as um, a claw, I call it, but it, it's adhesion point. You gotta do a scratch coat. 
I'm not going to use 36 grit on this if I just want a scratch coat. I may use 120. So you got to choose the right grit. Now, what if I'm removing this? Then, you know, you could start with like a granite paper uh, at 40 grit, but if you're taking too much time, grit is a, a time value. So what I would do <coughs> is I would probably start with this paper. It's called Saphir. It's cloth backed. I'm going to put it on my Rotex. Okay. And now I'm selecting the machine to what? Remove. And this is my most aggressive or Festool's most aggressive uh, grit, but also most aggressive machine. So now I got to select the right mode because I want to be in removal. So I'm going to hook it up. I got my Rotex here. Remember, plug it cord. It's a full quarter of a turn. And come in here, cameraman. <laughs> right here is the fine dots means it's in what? Random orbit. Okay, but if I put it in Rotex, you'll hear a click. Hopefully you hear that. What that means is it's an aggressive rotary eccentric orbit. It's tough to describe, but it is very aggressive. It's like a belt sander with a random orbit motion. So when I turn it on, you can see I can be very aggressive with it. Okay, and then if I take it in random orbit, and what if I want to just do a scratch pattern? I'll choose like a 120 here. Whoop, let's see if I got it. Nope. I had it right the first time. I'll put that on and I could do a scratch in between coats. So say I lay down a primer or I got a, a primer coat and then I got a coat of my first latex and I want to scratch it to give it a little bit more claw or actually denib. I'll just take the 120, put it in random orbit and then I get spray it or roll it again. So those are some of the reasons that we use sanders. <clears throat> now. I've covered a lot of these sanders already in different episodes, but what I wanted to do is combine them if somebody's out there in the paint trade or finishing trade to understand what the selection should be. Now we have these two and these are very common. These are random orbit sanders. These are our uh, EC motors, they're brushless motors and they're low ergonomics. I like always choose the six inch because it's so much more pad than a five inch, but we have a five and a three. And here's the selection on it. The five is the more aggressive orbit. It's a five millimeter orbit where the three is less aggressive. Why would I want to sand less aggressive? Easy. I want to finish the finish or I want to sand in between coats of thin layers of finish. So I will always choose a three. I would choose the right tool and when I was taught finishing uh, from my friend Ralph, my mentor, he always told me you never sand above 180 on raw wood because then you lose adhesion point. The finish is the finish. And then so when I started teaching here at Festool, people ask me, well, why does Festool, if that's the case, why does Festool have grits that are higher, like 220, 320, 400, all the way up to 1500? It's because you're standing in between coats of finish and you don't want to burn through. So I would choose a higher grit, 220 or 320, to sand in between coats of lacquer. All right, and the nice thing is you know this is a finishing the finish sander because you have the super soft pad. It actually floats it, and I can take that and get right it and, and just get a perfect flat surface. A lot of people would do this with, a, with lacquer. They would take it and they use their hand to denib it like that. Well, try using a sander because it keeps it flat. You get a more planar surface, and when you turn it on, it's just really light and it powders up so quick and you get it done and you can knock down all those highs so they're even with the lows and it gives you a perfect finish when you spray it the next time. Whew. Okay, now there's a certain sander in here that I've covered. I've devoted an entire episode to. It's called the RO90. It was designed for the painter working on what? on areas like this. Follow me over here, cameraman. Woo! Okay, working on jams. Okay, but also 
uh, working on window jams, jams. I use it for face frames because of the small pad. But the design on this, I can get the flats right here with this small three and a half inch pad, RO90, 90 millimeter. But I can take that and switch it right over to the detail pad so I could come in here and get these details or around hardware super easy. And I have three modes. I have the random orbit. Let me switch that out. Oh, most people don't know this who own this sander. I have random orbit in the middle, the tiny dots. I have the tight dots if I'm removing on those window jams or door jams. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a Rotex mode, but I can switch it all over and do a fine finish in orbital. That's what the triangular mode is. Also, I could put that triangular pad on right there, or I could take it, and this is an accessory for it, I could switch it out, whoop, whoop, whoop. You see how it's extended? And look how thin that is. So I've showed you before, this is just a simple reminder I can get in there and do shutters, okay, and louvers, just like this with that thin pad. But if you're out on the job and you work in exterior, you always have shutters and that'll let you get into those nooks and crannies and the thin pad. So that's the RO90. Now, whew, everybody wants to know, can I use the RO90 for cabinetry? Absolutely. But why do you have this sander? Is it the same thing? No, it is a much, I'll bring it over. It is a much larger pad. Okay, but the important part of this, this is the DTS 400. The important part is this has a slight arc to it. Okay, but it's also tapered up this way. So what's nice about that, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. This, this question came up after the uh, last Planex video or Festool Live on the Planex and I wanted to answer this question during this one. I will always recommend when you get a Planex, okay, the CT36, 36 AC Auto Clean. The question is, well, what about a CT48 Auto Clean? They do the exact same thing. But with the Planex, 36 AC, you have this end right here, and this, what? This anti-static hose, it's black, right? But there's also a steel cable in here. So it's a lot less, how do you say, crush proof. It doesn't degrade or break down. And because of this end, I can lock it in. The CT48 Auto Clean is great for the Planex, but it comes with this hose, and this has a tendency when you're working overhead to fall off, that doesn't have a locking. So if you get a CT48, because of the larger capacity, it has all the same things on it that the CT36 AC has, okay, but it comes with this hose, it's a 32 end to a 36 into the uh, CT, but it also comes with this. Okay, so I will tell everybody or coach everybody, if you get a CT48, get this anti-static hose that's black with that end as an additional hose. Because this hose is an anti-static hose as well, but there's no ribbing, it's actually, uh, it has a sleeve, and you can use it for everything in the Festool Acetal, and it comes with this great adapter, so I can actually take that and use that now with my DTS 400. Boy, that was a mouthful, huh? Wow, <laughs> oh my God. Woo, is everybody hanging in there? I hope, okay? Just want you to know that you could tell how serious we were because we were so quiet listening. It got quiet. Once a trainer, always a trainer. Okay, so when I'm using this, the one thing I wanna do is turn the suction down. Can you help me with this, please, uh, Travis? I need you to turn the suction down as I'm going, okay? And what happens is you can actually hear it. It actually starts to flow. But, but a nice thing is get in here, camera. Let's do it from this side, okay? Look, right in here, you gotta look here. You can get right into the corner, just like that, without abrading this. See this right here? Make sure you get that. Dirk from Dayton! All right. Now, if you're a painter,
They didn't get that on camera, did they, cameraman? <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> okay, now, what if you're a painter and you gotta go knock out something on the 23rd floor and you don't wanna take what? A dust extractor. And you don't want to, and you gotta go sand inside a built-in. And there's just a few things you gotta denib. Well, guess what? We have the DTS 400 in a cordless version with a great bag here. And I could do the exact same thing. And this bag gets really absolutely fantastic. And I will suggest that you also get it with the hybrid battery. Because now in the shop, you can do the same thing I just did here with the hose. This comes off and I can put the hose right on here. So you have the best of both worlds. So you gotta go do some quick knockout. We have a cordless version with the Ergo battery. And they still, and this is an 18 volt Bluetooth and it charges on the same charger as all the 18 volt platform. Okay, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, <laughs> now, this question came up yesterday. What's the one vac of all vacs or CTs or dust extractors, I still call them vacs, okay, in the Festool system for the painter? Well, if you're doing drywall, of course you're gonna have 48 or a 36, but make sure you choose the right hose. But it seems that the paint market, Travis, correct me if I'm wrong, goes toward the CT MIDI, right? And there's a great point on this. It's because you're using it up on a scaffold, whether inside or outside, and it's got a small footprint, okay? It's, uh, it doesn't, it's light in weight, but once again, small footprint. Now, the question came up yesterday as I was setting this up, because we have, I don't want to say several versions of small footprint dust extractors, but we have a CT MIDI, but now, we have a CTC MIDI, all right? A cordless version, which you can go completely cordless out on the job site, with, even with the brushless mode, um, brushless mode, even with the cordless DTSC. <laughs> One of these days, I gotta explain all these, <laughs> these abbreviations to everybody. Okay, now, we have two others, and this is where, it's not that I, for, I did, I forgot. Somebody was asking me, what's the difference between a uh, CT15, CT25, MIDI, and CT26? Okay, uh, the difference between a 25 and a 26 is price, but more so. The difference between a CT15 and is what? Price, but there's some major differences, and this is what I had to go through yesterday to relearn, because somebody was on the phone, was, <laughs> This is a great feature, especially if you're a painter. It's got lock, it, uh, it's got a kickstand, so it doesn't go rolling off the scaffold. And guess what goes with that? You, the cord, and the hose, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it's a great safety feature on these dust extractors, the middies, and all of them, except for the CT25 and CT15. The middies come with, the 27 hose, all right? <clears throat> it's Bluetooth it, um, compatible, but it's, it's got the Bluetooth on it, where the 25 and CT15 do not have that ability. They're plugins, okay? The hose here is, and this is where people, <clears throat> they think this is a, a, oh, I gotta make sure this sounds, they don't think this is an anti-static hose. Originally, it wasn't, but now we have it as an anti-static hose on both of these. The way you hook the hose is by this bungee cord here, and the other thing is it is flat, so you can sit on it. You have storage inside, but you can't lock your sustainers on it. Okay, and that's some features that you may want to look at to, to to go up to a CT MIDI. The reason they're not on here is because to save a few bucks. So that's what I wanted to point out to you. All four of those are fantastic for the painter. 
All right, they, they, they capture the dust at the source off of those sanders. Okay, now, ah, here's the one that people don't realize. Every painter needs a cordless drill. Okay, and this is wonderful for removing hardware. Hinges, okay, um, or installing hinges, uh, removing uh, uh, latches, everything. And the CXS12, the battery is a 2.5 amp hour, lasts forever, I shouldn't say forever, but it lasts such a long time that you can remove all the hardware in the kitchen or in a, in a, around the house inside or out on these batter, on these on a battery charge and it charges on the same 18 volt system. We have 18 volt versions of these CXSs. It's your choice. I prefer something light in weight like the CXS12. It's never ever let me down. Whew. I'm looking around. Did I cover everything? I covered the paper I wanted to cover. I think I got everything. Plainex. Look at that light. It's amazing, isn't it? Okay. How'd I do, okay? Okay, except you forgot one thing. What? If they buy the little CSX, yes. they need to get two because one will disappear out of their toolbox to stay home. That, that's true, I agree. Two. Many, many, it's got a built-in light. Ooh. Okay, so I don't know, the original CXS, I bought Mary Ann one mm -hmm. because it was so light in weight. She had it on her keychain so she could get in at night. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I didn't leave the porch light on. No? Christine, no? Come on, tough room today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Travis, could you bring the board over, please? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> one <job. laughs> the one job, Travis. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Give me a high five, bro. Woo! All right, so we have Andrew from Toledo, Ohio. Merlin, the magician from Wawa, Wa, Wa, is that Wawa Wa or Walla Walla? Walla Walla. Walla Walla, Washington. We have Doug from Zionsville, from Kapole, Oahu, Hawaii, or Hawaii. Did I say that right, Garrett? You're the best. <laughs> we have Joe from Wasika, Illinois. We have Dirk. It's him. It's Dirk from Dayton. He was right there from the get-go. We have Mike M. from Austin, Texas. We have Ray from Pensacola. We have Big Island Ed. That's the island of Hawaii, right? Oahu is where the capital of Honolulu is. Garrett's been teaching me the history of Hawaii. Okay, we have Christopher from Malta. We have Rob from South Devon, England. We have Brian from Kuwait City, Kuwait. Minnie, is that a new one? Yes, it is. Woo! We have Kuwait on the board. That's awesome. We have Des from Harrogate, England. Warren, Warren. We have Warren from Batavia, Ohio. It gets bad when everybody's shaking their head. Okay, we have Ray from Prague. We have Woodcraft Dayton crew. Woo! That's Dayton's Woodcraft right there. We have Seth from Woodcraft and Dayton. Again, we have Yizu from Paramaribo, Suriname. We have Jason and Yana from Granite Falls, Washington. We have Michelle from Paris. We have Eli from Denver. Jacob from Rhode Island. How you doing, Jacob? Bermuda Steve. Rick from sunny Blackpool, UK. Mac from Los Angeles, California. We have Fish and Doogie. <laughs> That's awesome. From Lancaster, PA. We have Ruben, Ruben from Centurion, South Africa. Wicked. We have Paul, Cheryl, and Sam. You're with us again from Anthem, Arizona. Russ, my main man, Hugstep from Chichester. We have Rick from Lena. Le Lenore. Lenore, thank you, Min Min, North, North Carolina. Carolina. We have Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. We have Jeff from Cincinnati. Daniel from Barrett, Switzerland. Jason from Fenton, Michigan. Blake Webber from Novato, California. Gerald from Derrida, LA. The man, the myth, the modern day legend, we have Ronnie Fulton. Oh, yeah. Woo! He has one job, and I still have to turn the board. It's okay. Mark from Krimpen, Anderlecht, the Netherlands. John from Westphalia, Vermont. Dylan and Rebecca from Cadston, Alberta. Aranzu from Missaga, Ontario. Jo I love this. Johnny Ringo from Searsport, Maine. Warped Woodsman, Costa Rica. 
You guys are in the Costa Rica, the Warp Woodsman? Dude, on vacation? Wow, you didn't take me with you. Okay, how's the fishing? We have Oliver from Southern California. We have Jeff from Clacksburg, Maryland. Joe, my main man, Joe from Akron O. Mac from Quintman, uh, is that LA, Los Angeles, Louisiana? LA. Los Angeles, <laughs> okay. That's good, man. <laughs> I don't know. That's good. It's Patrician. That's Willie. <laughs> DeCost and Sons from Atomac in Canada. Tom and Kelly, you're always with us. Woo! From Eatonton, Georgia. Claude from Luxembourg. Is that the first time? Luxembourg? I think so, yes. Whoa! Luxembourg. So. Kenna from Oak Park, Illinois. Greg from North Minnesota. Apo from A -A 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 Finland. We have Matt from Tinley Park, Illinois. Noise. Joran from the Netherlands. Wow, Minnie, this is awesome. We have Leo from Holland. Leo, you're always with us. Thank you. Matt from Newark, Ohio. Dave A. from Cape Cod. Sam from Charlottesville, Virginia. Petri from Yulavi, Finland. He's always with us. Yes. That's awesome. We have Brent from Louisville. Is that Kentucky? Yes. Uh, oh, KO. You know, okay. KY. All oh, right. Aguino from Hoxton, London, UK. Frank from Downers Grove, Illinois. Paul, I feel like I'm in high school with you, Garrett. Paul from Reading, Berkshire, UK. Dawn from Hoosick Falls, New York. Bland from Beaverton, Oregon. Carrie from Dallas. Mike P from Oahu. Woo! Give, Jeeve from Shaker Heights. That's Ohio. We have Scott from Greeley, Colorado. Ron from Eatonton, Washington. Stevie from Sweden. Mac from Mac S from Woodcraft, Springfield, Virginia. <sighs> okay, he stepped up. He stepped up. <laughs> we have Daniel, Daniel from Rolston, Hershgog, Wrexham. Does he play soccer? I don't know. We have Soren from Denmark. Norman from Fallbrook. I'm getting dizzy. Norman from Fallbrook, California. Jurgen from Delft, Netherlands. Johnny Rocket from Gales Creek, Oregon. Ernesto from San Francisco, California. Gary from Beers with the Boys. Rick from Tallahassee, Florida. Jeremy from Ilkeston, England. We have Marlon from Jamaica. Woo, how you doing, man? We have Jevin from Upper Sandusky, Ohio. <coughs> I know who that is, Jevin. Oh. I believe he's going to be here for the build-off. Yeah. Woo, Mr. Cheney. We have Jerry Tanzel, Melinda's husband. Woo, how you doing, Jerry? We have Dan from Kingman, Arizona. Mark from Quintman, L.A. It's her. She's with Dave. It's Dwayven Gwen from West Virginia. We have Nicholas from Belgium. Off the Cut Podcast, Columbus, Ohio. Is that really a podcast? I don't know. Okay. Massimo from Belgium. Steven from Augsburg, Germany. Brad from Northeast Indiana. It's him. It's Johnny O from Atco, New Jersey. Joe from Boston. Okay, then we have Bernie Bayer from Black Forest, Germany. Dev from Holland. Steve from Fort Wayne. Kevin from Toronto, Ontario. We have Gary from GGB Design, Texas. Mehul from Indiana. Anything on the back? India. India. I'm so sorry. And no. Just That's it. it. Oh, wait, wait. Somebody came from uh, Bethel, Connecticut. Let's see. J-A-C-I-N-T-O. Where's that point? Um, right here. Oh, yeah. We have Jaquinto Salinas from Bethel, Connecticut. So thank you. I want to thank you, Christine. I want to thank Rick on the line, uh, Minnie, uh, Garrett, and Travis, the ultimate board turner. Thank you so much. <laughs> Everybody, I just want to reach out to you and say thank you. Have a wicked awesome weekend. We love you. It's because of you we continue to do this. I still can't believe it. Next week will be episode 175, and the unit will be back in the house. Yes. So, hey, Emily. Chris, many years of happiness from all of us here at Vestool Live. You guys are awesome. So I wonder if they actually watched to the end today. <laughs> all right, everybody. Have a wicked awesome weekend. We love you. Bye-bye.